Welcome to Fort Knox. I am John Fort, live at the NASDAQ market site in Times Square. We're going to talk travel today. And we are on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, uh, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV. And I'm joined by just the people who I want to talk to about hacking travel using tech. Pilar Guzman is the editor-in-chief of Condé Nast Traveler, our own Seema Modi uh, at CNBC, covers travel. And Brian Kelly, the points guy, mm -hmm. founder and CEO of that. I want to start on saving money. So, Points Guy, you That's called my yourself business. the. So I expect, <laughs> I expect to learn how to uh, earn points. I'm a, I'm a Capital One Venture guy, uh, guy, and I'm holding this up because the number on this card is on the back, so none of you guys can actually see the number. Uh, but you know, it, I, I think it's pretty good. But tell me, yep. what should people be using if they can get a card, get yeah. the the best deal on travel for the summer season? What? Yeah. It was, so first off, points are money, right? That's the number one thing people should understand. And credit card sign-up bonuses are huge these days. There's a fierce competition in the marketplace to get travelers. So you can get, you know, on that card, it's 50,000 points. That's $500 towards travel. And the fees waived the first year on that card. Plus, you get 10 points on Hotels.com. The list goes on. But the cards that I really recommend are uh -oh. transferable points <laughs> cards. So that card's great because you can buy whatever travel you want, but it, you get a penny a point. Uh -huh. The cards where you can really maximize the value are um, cards that, like Chase Sapphire Reserve, which I think is the best all-around travel card. Mm. Okay. You know, people balk at the $450 annual yeah. fee, but you're earning $300 a year off the bat in free travel, which really brings the annual fee to one fifty. dollars but you get triple points on all travel and dining, and then you can take those points and transfer to United or Hyatt, stay in the Maldives, Do fly Uber and class. Lyft rides count, they count as travel? 3x. Not yeah. only that, okay. you know, MTA counts as 3x, parking, tolls. So the categories are really wide. So the goal is to get a credit card that's going to give you the most bang for every dollar that you spend, plus that big sign up bonus. Okay, people, write this down. If you haven't noticed already, we've got some real tips uh, coming at you. Right now, Pilar, now tell me about Condé Nast Traveler. You must be dealing pretty high-end stuff. So from you, you, we're going to be able to get a sense from maybe who's got the best amenities and maybe the easiest time, the smoothest time. Yeah. What are you guys recommending in terms of locations and even in terms of technologies that people sure. should be thinking about this Well, summer. just, you know, off the bat, and this is irrespective of, of any price point, um, you know, everybody should be signing up for clear, you know, anything where you can, where, where you can be hands-free getting through the airport. I think that is, you know, that has nothing to do with luxury. I mean, the luxury of time and of, of, a, of a frictionless travel experience is sort of um, that that sort of you know the redefinition of luxury is something that we're very interested in talking about because it isn't just about the high end everything. Um, in terms of the actual high end players, I would say that Peninsula is doing a really nice job of creating um, very intuitive um, iPad you know controlled uh, everything from opening the shades to controlling the lights and Peninsula uh, the Peninsula yeah the, pen what is the that? Peninsula hotel chain and okay. they have um, there's one in New York there's one in Chicago there's they have them you know um, handful around clearly the world. I am not an erudite traveler um, but uh, <laughs> New York Chicago um, the Peninsula you recommend the Peninsula Hilton hotel. also yes right, um, I have Waldorf yeah, Astoria yes, I Waldorf, stayed at the Waldorf Hilton, yeah. everything I <laughs> yeah. texted the yeah. hotel to get a massage that's and right. then I left my private privacy light on, they text me, hey, Brian, you left the privacy light on. Do you want us to clean your room? And I'm like busy. I'm like, yeah. Like, yeah. so instead of, it's amazing. I yeah. love that technology. I mean, and, the hotel yeah. as well, which has a robotic concierge in your room. So everything from ordering late night dinner to an, uh, a cab, a limo, whatever it may be, you can do all that from Can you from snuggle your with your robotic concierge? <laughs> I don't think it's that snuggly. <laughs> the the edges are a little <laughs> robot. That would really help, right? Some Especially more padding. Single. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Some ears, perhaps. Why not? What, Seema, as you cover travel and look into, I, I guess, new trends or capabilities that different companies are at. What catches your eye that might be especially relevant to the summer traveler? I think the big trend right now is these legacy operators like Marriott and Hilton and Hyatt are saying, listen, the millennials are now spending a larger percentage of their income on travel, so they have to do more on the technology side to really appeal to this growing audience. And I think summer will be a great test for these bigger companies to kind of market their, not just their rooms, but also their tours and their different uh, restaurants and experiences, because that's really what the millennial 
generation is going after. And summer is a time where we all want to really put that to use and have that beach experience, but also the best tour. If you're in Uruguay, if you're in Mumbai, go out wherever it may be, you want the best. I, I think it's interesting about tours. I went to Airbnb yesterday, and it actually asked first, do you want to rent an apartment or a tour? It was like one of two things. Right? And it was yeah. shocking that Airbnb, which is known for rentals, put up that tour business. They are but really they are doubling really down. really in the experience space. Yeah. And I think, you know, and, and even the sort of the, the chat bots in, you know, in your hotel experience, that they're offering that up as well. Um, you know, yeah. Hilton is a perfect example. They're, they're you know, curating experiences in cities um, across their whole collection, their Waldorf Astoria, Hilton and Conrad. Uh, and it's uh, it, it's interesting that that service and experience have become sort of, you know, continuous. Brian, I love to save money. So tell me about um, the, the vacation planning aspect. If I haven't planned all of my summer weeks out yet, if I've got a few open, maybe I want to be able to take a quick run to, I don't know, if I'm on the East Coast, Europe, or maybe to Mexico, or wherever people might want to run to. Hawaii, yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't know, that, that volcanic eruption that we keep showing on CNBC, some people probably figure the most whole, of the islands are fine, islands so are go get a deal when other so people are scared. Yes. Yeah, that's the best I mean, time. Is that happening? Too. Yeah, absolutely. What's yeah. Where, where the best Caribbean. deals tend to be and, so, and when? So first off, what I'll say about points is last minute airlines gouge airfares, right? Yeah. It's the simple, they know people are desperate. At the same time, airlines want to fill every single last seat. So if they know they're probably not going to sell, they actually release tons of award inventory at the very lowest levels. So back in the day, people used to think, oh, I need to book award tickets using my miles like 10 months in advance. That was the myth. Now, airlines actually release a ton of space, even up to the day of departure. Mm -hmm. So if you're a procrastinator like me or super flexible, sit down at your computer and look at some fabulous destinations, even like London, which you would think, oh, over Memorial Day might... Never think, you know, you know the answers to everything, right? You, you would be shocked at the amount of uh, award space opened up last minute. And I think that's true about Memorial Week and flying to Europe because most people are not going to Europe from the United States. Memorial, Memorial Day is an American yeah. holiday. Right. This is true of Thanksgiving. I, I, always, I always travel the week of Thanksgiving. These American holidays where you're dealing with domestic travel, exactly yeah. July 4th, it's actually a great time and, to go to Europe. And, and also for, for upgrades, places. right? So most yeah. business travelers, bankers who are paying full fare business class aren't traveling to London over July 4th. It's the same right. thing Thanksgiving. It can be a great time to redeem miles for upgrades or um, and I would say, too, with Europe, there's so many low-cost carriers now. Yeah. So Norwegian, Norwegian I is love. amazing. Yeah. the best. Yeah. Norwegian, truly, yeah. their premium product is better than any premium economy. It's like a business class, what you'd expect in the U.S. They don't gouge you based on last minute or one way. So I love Channel these. Channel yeah. What's so, so great like American it? Airlines, I was checking flights, one-way flights to London because I have yeah. a whole. I never really do round trip because my plans always change. But American will charge you like three grand yeah. one way for economy. Uh, it's like 9000 for business yeah. class. Norwegian charges like 400 one way, the same price as if you get round trip. And here's a tip with Norwegian. Way. So Norwegian okay. also flies to Scandinavia. This is a hack that I love. If you book, click Norway as your country on Norwegian Air and book your flight in Norwegian, in Norwegian Krona, you save up to 20% off the price of the hack. fare. I was going to say Ooh. currency is a big thing to yeah. watch. Not to get too wonky here, the dollar is stronger. That gives Americans more purchasing power, so that trip to Europe becomes now perhaps a bit more cost-effective. But don't just stop there. You look at the pound, which is at a year-to-date right. low. Um, the Argentinian peso, I mean, these are things that the real savvy travelers, John, they look at currency, and that could be an incentive yeah, to book that trip. But pretending to be a Norwegian, I want to go back to that. Because, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's a great hack. Yeah. Do you have to use Google to translate yes. You do, but it's so simple. I mean, booking a flight's pretty easy. So, it, you know, it, trust me, the, the two minutes it takes you to learn a little bit of Norwegian along the way. <laughs> I mean, you might end up in Reykjavik. I, yeah, meant which, to go which to, also, speaking right. of, Wow Air is growing yeah. like crazy. You can now fly from St. Louis to Reykjavik nonstop. Now, the one thing I will caution with Norwegian, there's this Primera Air. It's this new Danish carrier, um, $100 one-way flights to Europe. I mean, it's bare bones, but a lot of people don't care, yeah, right? You shouldn't have to right. pay for back. Right. But now, wait just, a minute. But just, is this like the Spirit Airlines of it, Denmark? It is, like, and I didn't do, take it myself because I'm a snob, but one of my writers <laughs> actually reviewed it on the inaugural, and it's fine. If yeah. you go in knowing what to expect. Now, Norwegian um, and all these low-cost carriers, if a flight's canceled, 
they're not rebooking you on Delta or American. And sometimes in some markets, the next flight's not till days away. So there is a risk. You know, they always say cheap is expensive. When it works, it works great. Right. But if these yeah. carriers that you're paying very little on, they're not going to rebook you in if there's anything that goes wrong. But so, Norwegian is nice. Norwegian I mean, is nice. That's yeah. the thing. It's not like. You, but even Norwegian, yeah. I, when they launched Oakland, they were flying Oakland to, I don't know, Milan or something. And they the, the 787 went down and it took several days. And people went were. Went down. Yeah, yeah. They like, you know, planes have mechanical issues. No, no, not one down. Okay, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I know a lot of here, people in Norwegian would not book them and people lost three days of their vacation so that usually doesn't happen but it's something to keep your eye on Pilar, where can i go to be cool because <laughs> you're already we, cool hey, thank you <laughs> but we were just in santorino and uh, santorini yeah. and it was overcrowded yeah, yeah i mean yeah. It, we, no, we, sure. we went before the heavy season sure so i guess that's kind of cool like so, we were there before. yeah but so, i mean there's some places that are kind of played out so there, what's there the other, next cool place there are other islands well, if you're staying in greece there are islands like um patmos and paros which are a little further out but they're they're less touristed which is nice santorini is really quite overrun it's beautiful but it's overrun mykonos same thing mm -hmm. um and in northern in Europe, whereas Iceland has been a little bit played out and overrun places like, I mean, that's, you know, going into Scandinavia, um, you know, it, it, Copenhagen has been a, a huge destination, especially for food people, mm -hmm. um, Stockholm. But now I feel like places like Antwerp um, and Ghent, which are sort of like the second cities, your Philadelphia, if you will, right. or your Nashville of Northern Europe. These are um, tiny. They're sort of, they're kind of, they're so cool and so unselfconscious and egoless. They don't, they're not all wrapped up in their, you know, their food ego. They're just kind of perennially cool. Um, and these are places that are actually relatively inexpensive. They have a couple of small, you know, boutique hotels that are fantastic. You can manage them in a weekend, you know, so we're, we really have our eye on places that are that are small, manageable, that you can And I think that speaks to of. a big trend, which is yeah. authenticity. Yeah. People want that authentic local experience when they're traveling. They don't want to just go to Barcelona and be bombarded by tourist shops where you can buy keychains. They want right. to really feel like they're living in that village for that one week that they're exactly. spending in Crete or Croatia or Ibiza, which actually is also getting a bit touristy, John. And you so said I know it the right way. Planning <laughs> on going to yeah. this summer for maybe a house party. What do you, have you guys heard of, I hear a lot about Malta and Corsica yeah. Yeah. and even Greenland as a yes. substitute. To um, Iceland. And Cor Corsica, yes, all, all yes. Um, really? Corsica, Is there, there's something on Greenland? It's apparently unbelievably, insanely beautiful. It's like the it's New like Zealand of, of, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, it's uh, Corsica, I think, is a great example of a you know an island experience, or Ischia um, off of Italy, which is again relatively close to get to. Last summer, I went to a tiny island called Ponza, which is like basically 55 minutes off the coast, an hour from Rome, and then another hour by ferry, and it is absolutely caught in time. Not one, you know, chain store, not one luxury chain, nothing. Um, and so we, we want places that are trapped in time, but also that have fantastic food. Well, the thing right? with Italy is like, you you can't have a bad meal. <laughs> right. um, Except in the winter. certain yeah. parts of Italy. Um, in the winter, when all they're serving vegetables, sometimes you can, right? What's that? In, in the winter, when they're just serving vegetables, <laughs> and like stew things, I've, I've had a bad <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's true. In the summertime, when, you know, tomatoes are everywhere, and you just kind of can't go wrong. True. Yeah. What about the Caribbean? Is there any place undiscovered in the Caribbean or? Um, you know, there's, uh, I think, you know, St. Vincent, um, there's new airlift there. And so that's making those, the Grenadines a little bit more accessible. And those, because they haven't had, you know, it's a sort of the vicious circle of um, it's, you know, you get airlift and then you get more hotels and, you know, so, uh, and round and round we go. But still, that's pretty pristine these days. What do you make of the recovery? I was just on a seven day cruise to the Caribbean where we where stopped we? at St. Thomas, yeah. St. Martin, nice. uh, Barbados. What, it was interesting about St. Martin. Uh, unfortunately, the destruction just, is hmm. just, I mean, Decimated. it's everywhere. You go on the boardwalk and there are a number of the high-end luxury stores that are still uh, being built up again. Um, yeah. It's unfortunate because the hurricane season is about to start yeah. in four weeks yeah. again and they're yeah. still not getting over the last one. Yeah, it's pretty It's pretty tough. I mean, St. Martin really got hit hard. I just heard about something um, in the BVI's. Um, uh, they're courting um, uh, tourism by boat so that you can actually experience the islands and, and some, you know, all ranges from the high, medium, sort of low end. Um, and it's, you know, that's a really nice way to kind of be there I, without um, having yeah, to, to We've got some questions, Go so I want to get some yeah. of the viewer questions okay. in. Tig Andrews asks, what should you do if you hate to fly? <laughs> I took my first cruise last year. Yeah. It was a Disney cruise. We awesome. got two young kids. They gave it 
A plus, five star, six star ratings, whatever. But you know, if we're looking at, are there deals on Absolutely. cruises? Exactly how and when should you try to book? Any hacks, any tricks? Cruisecritic.com? Cruisecritic, yeah. I'm not a cruiser, so I'll yield to the other experts yeah, on the panel. I, I was actually that. just uh, recently on two ships. Um, I was just on the Norwegian at the same blitz time. at the same time. It's miraculous, <laughs> remarkable. I'm, 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 I'm a miracle worker. Um, Norwegian Bliss was just docked here in the New York Harbor. Um, brand new ship. Um, Incredibly beautiful, incredibly well done, um, huge, um, and they have something called the Haven, which is sort of a ship within the ship. So if you want to sort of get away from the noise, there's that. But if you have kids, there's slides and go-karts and all these crazy things. So if you were to do an Alaskan cruise, which this time of year is actually a perfect thing to do, yeah. um, you leave from Seattle. I guess this doesn't this doesn't address our um, I don't know I don't know where our our, um, our person is They're coming everywhere. from here. <laughs> I left from but, Vancouver uh, when I went on Alaska. Yeah, cruise. so yeah, yeah. you know this is kind of a great time of year to do that and everybody sort of wins you get a kind of a super educational kind of experience which you can't otherwise do by land because you this is the, the way to see the glaciers is by boat full stop <laughs> um, and you know there is kind of the best of both worlds something like these that. river yeah. cruises that are yeah. also getting yeah. a lot yeah. of attention look at Viking cruises which actually is owned by TPG the big private equity firm yep. I mean they're providing that Mediter Mediterranean experience and to your point I mean those type of experiences you kind of want to be on a ship to really be ex really uh, uh, embrace the beauty that you see on the island well now, I hear yeah. I hear that cruising is like I don't know being on a dating app like there's a depending on where you are in life and your demographic, there's a cruise company specifically Absolutely. for you. You don't obviously, I guess, want to be uh, on a Disney cruise if you're young, young and, and hip, and and, if yeah. you're Seema Modi. Whereas <laughs> that's Thank pretty you. much that's pretty much my core. That's that's what I'm doing. Sure, Seema. of course. Um, Star I get Wars it. at sea. So how do you figure out which one is right for you and is going to give you the best experience based on who you are? I think one of the best things about cruising is there's just so many opportunities and things to do once you're on the cruise. So if you're going with a big Should group... Should we stop calling it cruising? That sounds kind of sleazy somehow. <laughs> it does. I don't know. It's but sometimes it's it, a way, can, good way it to makes it sound kind of sexy. Yeah. It does. Yeah, you're yeah. cruising. Um, listen... The, there's so many things to do on a cruise. I was just on a Royal Caribbean cruise from dining to a Broadway experience to getting your nails done, you know, off-board excursions, snorkeling. It's all there. It's all inclusive. So you don't have to worry about how, what you're paying or whether it's going to cost too much. But the quality, I will say, isn't is a bit subpar to what I'm experiencing in New York. I'm not getting the fine dining experience when I'm on these cruises, I, 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 but yeah. it does change really if you're willing depends to on the ship. buy yeah. the higher mm -hmm. end package. Ritz Carlton actually just yesterday announced, so they start cruising in 2020. They have this tricked out cruise ship where you actually get, there are lofts where you have like yeah. a villa on a mm. ship, so they're yeah. kind of taking the whole cruising. Absolutely. Doesn't go till 2020, but that's when I might. I well, might Virgin yeah. Two is coming out. Virgin yeah. is coming out with their own cruise for in people who hate to cruise, yeah. and that's supposed to be <laughs> the West Village on a ship. Think about that. But also, you have to West Village today or the West Village. Like, like, yeah, there's a jazz bar <laughs> yeah, right. on the cruise ship. Okay. There's nice restaurants, like that full experience. Uh, uh, it really does depend on the cruise line um, and 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 the size of the ship. You know, you have your ocean liners, which are huge and you know, if that's not your jam, um, you know, it's it sort of, it's got everything, and that's the good news and the bad news if you're, depending on who you are. Um, the smaller ships, um, really, there are places, there are parts of, you know, Russia and, and you know, the outer reaches of, you know, uh, even the 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 the, uh, the Black Sea, places like that, you can't get there in in, in another way. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of the thing. The expedition boats are actually really interesting, yeah. and so you have the sort of you know, depending on the uh, what what line you're going with. I mean, you have incredible food that you know, or you know, depending on the ship. So. Um, I think really there's there's a like ho like the hotel business there is something for everyone. I think it sort of gets put into a big bucket that um, is probably a bit of a misnomer. And John, Brad Kulik writes in a tip this and this is just practical for folks. Uh, take an extension cord on trips because running into a hotel with limited or not well placed outlets so can annoying. Be a frequent I've had to remove occurrence. beds from walls. Yeah, but I do want to get back to the question about nervous flyer. I want to help nervous our friend, flyer. the yes. nervous Nelly. So first, I would say like look at statistics. Air Airline flying, barring the crash in Cuba or whatever, is extremely safe. It's as safe as it's ever been. And I would say, secondly, talk to your doctor because anti-anxiety meds definitely yep. do help. But I recommend always test them out before you get on a metal tube. <laughs> so many people will have a couple glasses of wine and then try out a new like medication on board. And that's when you see people doing crazy stuff in the aisles. And then thirdly, I think a lot of people are nervous about turbulence. And just know the bigger plane you fly, the less you feel. So I'm an Airbus yep. A380 kind of guy. It's huge. 
smooth ride, and just know turbulence alone does not take down airplanes. It's, Got a doctor here. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Amen. <laughs> yes. So, uh, again, this is Fort Knox Live. We are live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, talking about travel hacks and tech. Now, I want to turn to the experience. What properties am I going to have just an absolute amazing experience in if it's technology led i guess all the better uh, on the cruise side the disney cruise impressed us on yeah. a number of levels not on how much they charge for wi-fi that was too much but um putting the kids into kids club and sort of like they could kind of scan in scan out that was nice we felt secure in that but for the rest of us who perhaps are going without the kids are there places are there experiences that are just going to be next level special Sure. Uh, you, you have something off the top of your well, head. Well, I think Moxie yeah. is a really interesting yeah. brand. Yeah. This new brand that, that Marriott unveiled. Yeah. It's hip, cool, really contemporary decor, but also provides that seamless check-in experience. So you're is not that waiting in line. Or where yeah, can you find there's, it? there's one that just opened in Times Square. Um, and there's a, a bunch that are just slowly coming up at, in Tier 1 and Tier 2 cities across the U.S. and in Europe as well. And this is just another example of a big brand like Marriott that is trying to appeal to a younger audience that is much more digital savvy than perhaps Don't they have like an mom. adult playground on the roof they or something do. Like They do. They have that. a really interactive experience on the rooftop, the sp specific one on, in Times Square. Now, what does that mean? Because I hear adult playground and interactive experience, Miniature and that could mean <laughs> any range. Your mind is in the gutter today. No, no, it's in the, it's in the pool, uh, the infinity pool. Up on the roof. I just want to be sure okay, that we don't leave club. things there's a nightclub. There's a nightclub, but okay. There's also miniature golf um, with some provocative, what do you call them, like statues? Yeah. Um, it, it's fun. There's miniature also... golf with provocative statues? <laughs> you should just see it for yourself. See, this well, is, what this I, is, this is why I asked, yeah. because I figured I might get something. I also think like there's a bit of a movement, at least in the sort of the high-end space, where you sort of, you front load all of your preferences at the outset, and then, and then you're sort of phone-free. Which I think is sort of the ultimate that it's you know that that yes you're preloading your, your your preferences so that you don't have to make another decision again and that is the ultimate luxury is to be sort of off the grid yeah you know to be ultimately on the grid and then ultimately off I I would just chime in there I think so many people think oh experiences oh technology let's put the two together like yeah. I personally love technology to book my room get yeah. transparency what's my room going to look like yeah. But I stayed at um, one of the top hotels in the world, Nihiwatu. It's yeah. this resort in Indonesia. And what I Super loved about good. it is you are off the grid. There's actually, there wasn't Wi-Fi in your room. You had to go to the lobby, which uh. on a business day, that would stress me out. But it forced you to get out. And, and what I loved is like their spa was actually across a rice paddy. So you had to do a 30-minute hike to get to this beautiful spa inlaid into oh. a cliff on this remote island in Indonesia. And it, the most I've ever experienced, just total disconnection and I think we all need electronic rehab so totally so as much as convenience the new luxury I think that might be the theme <laughs> I just Actually, unearthed here right now so. but I think sort of technology is a means to completely disconnecting yes. um, ultimately is sort of like for me the holy grail yep. what about travel agents I feel like SEMA they've made somewhat of a comeback like mm -hmm. we, we can book on Expedia home away Airbnb etc cetera, etc cetera, but if we can do that complex vacation with the trip and have somebody else handle that stuff, right. we want to. Am I, am I wrong? No, or? I think you're right. Travel agents are slowly making a comeback, especially with the higher end uh, customer that is looking for that luxury experience where they want it to be completely seamless and efficient. They want, don't want to have a six over six hour wait uh, in Singapore before they get to Bali. Uh, they so want how to much sure money do people have to spend for it to be worth it? Are we talking 5,000, 10,000 more? I think there's like a the fee. There's usually like 10 to 15 percent yeah, yeah, of, uh, the, you know, of the total but I, I think, vacation you know, package. At the really high end, I think it's about getting experiences you can't otherwise get, yeah. that you cannot book yourself because you need the person to clear the border control, and, mm -hmm. and they're the person who've actually, ha, they're the, the expert is the person who has forged that yeah. sort of but ability to do that. But your is telling me really high end, and I don't know what that yeah, means. How, no, many, how many zeros are we talking before I should be talking It really depends on the place. Agent. If you're, you know, if you're going to Kamchatka, Russia, you know, you have a plane and a boat and a this and a that, and that's going to be a lot of money. That's a big ticket trip. I mean, all in, that's like a, you know, $30,000 trip. Okay. But... But that's really far, and that would cost anyone a lot of money with or without a fixer. You need a fixer for a place like that. But if you're talking about, you know, you're renting a beautiful villa on, yeah. on a Greek island, then you're paying a percentage. Actually, I'm pretty savvy with travel. I took me and four friends to Iceland for New Year's Eve, and I engaged Iceland luxury tours. And it was not cheap. I think it was like 20000 for the 
five of us. Well, it's like 4,000 a person for three days of amazing guides, excursions, everything handled. These must be really good friends. And yeah. <laughs> I, I, I earned the points, and then I charged them for it. <laughs> okay. I'm kidding. Yeah, actually, yeah, yeah. Did you the double yeah, Yes. <laughs> we were working, too. We were filming footage, so I put them to work. But it was amazing. I mean, and truly, time is a luxury. That's and right. Saving time and frustration. And I think with so much information on the Internet and TripAdvisor going to, and you're like, Oh, oh my gosh, how do I, TMI. you know, so I think travel agents getting curated who know your likes and needs and, you know, you just have to get over the fact you're going to pay a premium for that, but it's going to, you know, we, especially for people who only have one big vacation a year, That's right. invest in a little bit extra to make sure it's done right because here's a, small mistakes can cost you. Here's a good question. What are the best affordable companies that provide active family vacation services? And as I kick off this question, I will give a little hack. That, that I discovered uh, when, we, when we planned our trip to Greece, um, which was crazy, but we took our kids to Greece. For the, uh, we looked at Disney's kind of family cruise itinerary to Greece, and then we just copied it. We were like, they do this, and yeah. they do this, and they do that. Yeah. Okay, we're going to do that, but we're not going to pay Disney to set mm. it up for us. And then I like to take photos, and I looked at you know, people who were doing these photo tours that they were leading people on, saying, hey, we go th here at this mm -hmm. time and take pictures of the Acropolis. It's like, okay, thank you. I'll just go do that myself. So you're, right. you're, you're, you're a plagiarizer. You're a travel plagiarizer. Well, I didn't write it down, so it's not plagiarism. <laughs> you know, it's here's what it is. I think you're, obviously, you're obviously well-traveled and you're comfortable. I think a lot of people, and I think this is true of many Americans. I mean, you, you hear, I hear this from travel agents all the time, that the Brits and the French and the Italians are much more sort of fearless. I think that's changing with millennials, for sure. But historically, that's been true. And I think that, that you know, Americans, we pay for the... The, the sort of the hand-holding, I mean, if we could do it ourselves. So you're paying a premium for just the, the preemptive anxiety that goes into to, to travel. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, definitely. So it's, I, I do think that there's, you know, you, don't, you may not need a travel agent for certain kinds of trip. Other people really feel like they need their hands. I'll just interject. Help. In the point space for family travel, there's this website called Mommy Points. And so Mommy using points. frequent flyer <laughs> miles for travel with kids. So I'm yeah. a single guy and I fly first class. But there's all these really cool nuances to redeeming points and getting extra leg room and seats with your family. You know, these days airlines don't let families sit together unless they pay. So that's one of the... Um, blogs in my space that does really listen, good. If you're a global citizen and you tend to travel internationally on a regular basis, something as simple as loungebuddy.com can yep. help you find the best lounge and also know if Tell you, us about loungebuddy. What, loungebuddy what does it do is for just you? great. It's such a simple app, but it basically takes all your credit card information. You don't need to put your number in. Yeah. You just need to tell them which credit cards you have um, and whatever, else, whatever other companies you have a membership in, a Soho house, for example, and they'll tell you what lounges you have access to. and like perhaps, airport lounges. Yeah, yeah, airport lounges, but they also provide um, restaurant recommendations as well. If you're in a city only for four hours and need to find the best place to eat that's close to the airport, not too far away. Um, it's simple, easy, Great. but it works. Nice. All right, so uh, we're wrapping up. I want to get everybody's best tip. Everybody's best tip they can offer. Maybe you can reiterate uh, which credit card you think might be best for people who are looking to maybe do some travel either for themselves individually or for a family. I'm trying to give a long wind up so you have some time to think. I'm good. Brian, yeah. So, I mean, look, credit cards are it. In the points game, you can save thousands. You know, our, our readers at thepointsguy.com know how to maximize and go on lots of trips. So I would just say get a credit card that gives you a big sign-up bonus. And number two gives category bonuses where you spend. So if you spend on dining, groceries, there's a lot of different options out there. Give us a couple names. Um, so, for example, American Express Platinum Card offers 5X on That's all great. airfare, which is the best. You don't have to book through Amex. You can book on any airline website. So 5X, Amex points, plus you get lounge access to Centurion, to Delta. So yeah. I guess the, the overall theme is cheap is expensive. A lot of people <laughs> go for no annual fee credit card, but that is not going to get you the most points or the best perks. So evaluate both the earning and redeeming. Can you use those points on a lot of partners? But then also the points and the perks. So are you getting value and is your travel experience? And I would also reiterate clear. If you yes. live in an airport that has clear, clear allows you to biometrically bypass the TSA pre-check line, which in many airports like LaGuardia is out the door. Yeah. And if you have clear, it's, I don't know, $100 or something. You just put your, you don't have to pull your ID out. You put your two fingers, you 
jump the TSA pre-check line. Sign up for all of them, though, yeah. because they don't always have all of them global in every entry. area. So just a global entry, TSA, all of it, and and you know that that way you will save yourself so much headache. And now just download. Just give your DNA and, to everybody. I mean, it's, it's all out there anyway. So anyway, anyway exactly right. Time. And download the uh, passport app. That's the other. That's my the mobile passport. Yeah, exactly. Because yeah. even sometimes global yep. entry is down. Exactly so. right. Now the line is super long, or the machines are down. That is definitely. And also the global entry machine where you put your face. That's the dirtiest place. The airline kiosk is the dirtiest. Place at the airport. That so and the, I'm and not a germaphobe, but anytime you touch a machine in the airport, pure It's gross. Purell. Seema. All right. Some big currency moves in the last month. This could work in your advantage, to your advantage, if you're an American trying to book last minute summer travel. Look to those countries where you've seen a significant depreciation. Your dollar now goes further. Argentina, Europe, Britain, keep it in mind. Yeah, my last thing is do not get euros here in the U.S. if you're going overseas. <laughs> if you have any kind of a decent bank relationship, just wait until you yeah, get there. Totally. Pull it out of an ATM. You will get a much better exchange rate. Oh, and take your phone because you can pay for so many things by phone, just Samsung Pay, Apple Pay, whatever. And it's Google Fi easy. is a service that works globally instead of roaming on Verizon, which is exorbitant. Google Fi, you can put it on an old phone, and it gets you, I think, $10 or $5 a day, something really cheap. So many tips. Thank you so much. I think we've helped people to travel half. Pilar Guzman, uh, the editor-in-chief of Condé Nast Travel. Yeah, Pilar gave some tips. You gave some tips. You have more tips? I did. Oh, uh, you know, I had one more that I just uh, right. that I just tested out. Um, Skyroam. Do you have you heard about that? Yeah. So it's basically like a little Wi-Fi um, device that I, I doubles as a charger, and it works in like uh, I think I don't know 120 cities or something like this, and. Um, that's something that's that we're very excited about because anywhere where there's you know any cell phone, any signal, you can tap into it and it's great. So then you're not paying for roaming. Just that just reminded me of that. No roaming. Bonus no roaming. <laughs> Say no to roaming. Elon no Dijon, no editor in chief, Kanye West, traveler, Seema Modi from CNBC, and Brian Kelly, the points guy. Thanks so much to all of you, and thank you for watching.